Mitch Green, born January 13th, 1957, is an American former professional boxer who competed from 1980 to 2005. He is best known for having gone the distance with Mike Tyson in 1986, who was undefeated at the time, and had won 20 matches in a row, 19 of them by knockout. Two years later, in 1988, Green ended up fighting Tyson again, but this time in a notorious street brawl. A toothpick dangling between his lips became his trademark as any public appearance. Green grew up in the Bronx on 175th Street, between Anthony and Clay Aves. There was an article done in the Golden Gloves by Thomas Hanneran, which was quite interesting, which I thought I would read out and give you a good insight into his early days. His mother named him Mitchell Green, but if you're from Uptown, you probably know him as Blood. That came from all the street fighting I used to do when I was young and dumb, he explained yesterday. I'd always made something, made somebody believe when I hit someone, a nose, a lip, something. There was a need for that in the neighbourhoods Green grew up in. He started out in the Bronx on 175th Street between Anthony and Clay Aves. Then there was a stop in Harlem, 142nd Street and Lenox Avenue. Another leisure zone in Fun City and the Bronxdale Projects in Soundview near Rosdale and Watson Avenue. Oh, they were off. Bad places, recalled Green, who lives today in Jamaica, Queens. Especially uptown where I was a member of the Black Spades. We had hundreds and hundreds of members and it was the... Uh, basis of the Black Warriors gang that was featured in the movie The Warriors. Green was always at the front when the gang decided to play. At six foot five and 210 pounds, he was an obvious target. I was shot twice when I was 17, said Green, who was 23 today and going for his fourth Golden Gloves Heavyweight Championship. But it had to have been the will of God that I wasn't hurt. The first time Green was shot, it was with a 22nd Magnum, 20, 20, uh, 22 Magnum. The bullet passed through with the right wrist, not a good place for a boxer to be wounded, but the slug missed arteries, bones and nerves, and Green was fighting again a short few weeks later. The second time he sustained a graze wound, when a slug slashed the right side of his head and after sparring Green, but leaving a short, puffy scar. Ironically, it was the gunfights that led Green to a less lethal but still dangerous mode of gang conflict. I used to be one of the two guys who would take on any other two guys from any other gang, said Green, a toothpick dangling between his lips and slightly sleepy look on his big face. That was better than having the whole gang rumble, he added. And it taught me a lot about how to survive in a serious fight, which which may make the ring a tame area in comparison, because of all the fighters in the 54th Golden Gloves, Green is the most composed, the least ruffled when the time comes to mix it up legally. For a big man, he moves with the grace of a lightweight. Do not confuse his punches with that size of a boxer, however, because when Green hits people, rapid fire bursts that illustrate the veracity of his street name, there are a few people who can remain on their feet. He will meet Merlin Castellano, a 19-year-old construction worker from the Bronx, Friday, March 14th at 7.30pm in Madison Square Garden. Green is the heavy favourite, not only because of his background on the street, but because he is also the defending intercity champ and has posted a respectable international record of 5-1. So that was an article, guys, from Golden Gloves by Thomas Hanneran back in the day. I thought that was... A nice little insight, a nice little find to give you a bit of a backdrop about his him growing up. But we'll go on to his amateur career now. As an amateur, he won the New York Golden Gloves four times, 1976, 1977, 1979 and 1980. And compiled a record of 64 wins and seven losses with 51 wins by knockout. Green won the 1976 Sub-Novice Heavyweight Championship at the 77, 79 and 1980 heavyweight open championships as well. He defeated Anthony Zamble to win the 1976 title. In 77, Green defeated Guy Casal for the title. 79, Green defeated Ralph Fucci for the championship. And in 80, 1980, Green defeated Merlin Castellanos for the title. He suffered a decisive cut loss in the 78 tournament, preventing him from winning a fifth Golden Gloves title. So that is really as elite as you can get. Um, for American amateur. He was also a two-time Intercity Golden Gloves champion. In 1977, he won the title by knockout in a one-round win over Calvin Cross, and again in 79 by a decision win over William Hosey. Mitch lost against uh, Russian boxing great Igor Vizatsky in a 1978 matchup, but was con still considered a prospect for the 1980 Olympic Games 
which was held actually in Moscow at the time. But the US boycotted the event and Green, Green also lost to Marvis Frazier in the quarterfinals of the Olympic trials that year. Now, I've got a quote here from Marvis Frazier on fighting Green. He said, I hit him with double rights twice and he had to go down, but he didn't. He refused. I couldn't believe it. And I put a couple of left hooks right on the money. It was a war. So that was uh, Marvis Frazier talking about the fight. Uh, Green lost to him in the Olympic trials. He did, however, in the finals of the Eastern Regionals, managed to beat perennial contender Woody Clark. In amateur competition, Green also lost bouts to future world champions Greg Page and Tony Tubbs, though he did manage to beat Tubbs in the 78 Sports Festival. Surprisingly, he also lost to future cruiserweight champion Alfonso Ratliff in a 1980 New York Chicago intercity matchup. Right, we'll move on to his professional career now, guys. Green turned pro in 1980, signing a contract with a rock promoter, Shelley Finkel. Um, obviously, we know Shelley Finkel has a lot to do with Deontay Wilder, etc. Now, but um, he was the rock promoter back then, and Green turned over with him. Uh, they met at, in 1979 at a New York Golden Gloves. As a professional, Green was one of NBC's Tomorrow's Champion, a group of Finkel's young pros, which also included Alex Ramos, Tony Ayala Jr., Donald Curry and Johnny Bumpfus. Mm. And he was ranked as high as number seven by the WBC and also in the top ten by the WBA. Green left Finkel after a year as a pro after a disagreement over payoffs. He was managed by Carl King, son of Don King, who was Green's promoter. Mitch was undefeated in the first 16 bouts, which included a 1983 points win over the rugged Floyd Jumbo Cummings and a draw with trial horse Robert Evans. His first loss was a 12-round decision to future WBC champ Trevor Burbick in a bid for the United States Boxing Association title in 1985. If you want to know more about Trevor Burbick, guys, there's a video I've got on my playlist um, all about his life, and his murder in Jamaica and everything else, which is an interesting watch. In March 1985, Green violently interrupted a press uh, conference between Larry Holmes and David Bay. It was a big championship fight, claiming that he was a way better contender than Bay and seeking for a clash with Don King's people. Um, the reason why he wanted to clash with Don King's people, he was none too happy with the relationship he had with Don King and his son, and felt basically that he was being stitched up within the contract, which would, that would rumble on for years. So we move forward to the big one, Green versus Tyson. After a comeback win over Purcell Davis, he lost a 10-round decision to Mike Tyson in 1986 on HBO in his most famous fight. In the build-up to the fight, Green had complete, uh, complained bitterly of the disparity in purses between him and Tyson, when a day before the fight at weigh-ins, Green learned he was being paid $30,000 in comparison to Tyson's $200,000 for the fight alone, in addition to a $1 million deal with HBO for the live broadcast of three fights. He threatened to pull out the contest, finally settling for being released from his managerial contact, contract with King's steps on call in return for his short purse. Green put a stubborn showing during the fight despite losing a 10-round unanimous decision. And at one point, managed to knock one of Tyson's gold teeth out, which landed in front of writer Phil Berger. A week later, Green was released from his contract by manager Cole King, who was criticised the previous week by Green for mishandling his career. Now, I remember this fight, guys. And Tyson was just literally destroying everyone before him. And I was pretty surprised. I was a young, but I was pretty surprised um, watching that fight because it was... He did, he did very well to subdue him being the bigger man, Mitch Green. And, you know, I was expecting Tyson just to blow him up. But he didn't, which, which is um, kudos to Green and his boxing IQ and using his size and everything else to get through that one. That's when Tyson was really in his prime. Green was later signed to face James Bonecrusher Smith on December the 12th, 1986, as part of a Don King-produced event for HBO from Madison Square Garden. The match between Green and Smith was to serve as part of uh, an event's undercard with Tim Witherspoon set to defend his WBA championship in a rematch against former champion Tony Tubbs, from whom Witherspoon had wrestled the championship 11 months earlier. After Tubbs pulled out the contest with a reported injury, Witherspoon instead gave Smith, whom he had beaten in a 12-round decision in 85, 
to earn the shot at Tubbs, a rematch with the title on the line. Green was left off the event as a, ref- as a result since a replacement opponent was not found. Green later appeared at the Witherspoon Smith pre fight negotiations, again threatening Don King. So, this issue of Don King was rumbling on then. And obviously, Don King was sort of, he was at his height then and at his most dangerous. So, that was sort of a big, big back and forth clash he was having with Don King. Green refused to box for many years and was in frequent trouble with the law. He finally returned to the ring in February 1993, then age 36, against journeyman Bruce Johnson, again complaining about his purse and his new manager. Green refused to throw any punches and argued consistently with the referee until the exasperation, the exasperated ref stopped the bizarre contest in the third. Throughout the 1990s, Green sporadically came out of retirement, most notably in bids for the New York State heavyweight title against fringe contenders Malvin Foster in 94 and Brian Nix in 98. A 1998 win over Mike Dixon was ruled a no contest when Green tested positive for marijuana. A March 96 contest with Shannon Briggs fell apart when Green pulled a gun on his manager. So there's a recurring theme here. Um, We know that Don King's way of doing things is not great, but it does seem like at the time, Mitch Green was a little bit of a loose cannon himself. Green was scheduled to fight James Brawl for the NABF title in 85, but dropped out of the fight for money reasons. Later in his career, an age Green held two spurious championships. He won the World Boxing Empire Super Heavyweight title with a 12-round decision over Danny Wofford on March 9th, 2002, and was proclaimed the Universal Boxing Organization Heavyweight Champion on June 24, 2005. He never defended either title. His last fight was a fourth-round knockout of Billy Mitchum. Okay, so let's touch on the feud with Mike Tyson. Now, Green was also known for an incident that began in the early hours of August 23rd, 1988, in Harlem. Tyson and some friends were shopping at Dapper Dan's, a Harlem clothing store. Green had heard that Tyson was in the area and found him, demanding a rematch. A scuffle ensued. Green allegedly threw a punch, and Tyson responded with a punch of his own closing Green's eye and requiring stitches to his nose. Tyson broke his hand in the incident and had to postpone his first fight with Frank Bruno. Later, although a New York journey, the jury awarded Green £45,000 in damages in a civil lawsuit against Tyson. The sum did not cover the legal fees. Tyson later recounted his version of the fight in his book and Broadway show, Undisputed Truth, as well as Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson. Now, Tyson's view of this is that he was there with his friends, his entourage, if you like, shopping for these clothes. He was trying on all these expensive jackets and everything else. He said that suddenly everything went quiet. And obviously Mitch Green, an imposing figure, six foot five, toothpick dangling from his teeth, his gold teeth. He had a number of gold teeth as well. Um, And it went quiet and Tyson turned around and he was there saying, basically, what the F are you doing here to Mike Tyson? Now. Obviously, his career was on the skids at this point. He was getting on. He'd heard Mike Tyson was in the area. He obviously wanted a little bit of clout, which you can't blame him for. Um, maybe he was trying to orchestrate this thing to try and get a you know legal settlement, trying to trying to goad Tyson. But Tyson taunted him, saying, "You know, I beat you once. Do you want me to beat you again?" That kind of thing. Um, Green was like, "You never beat me." And there was sort of some kind of argument. Then all of a sudden, an eyewitness said Tyson just burst into action. Bang, bang, bang. Three punch combo. And Tyson says himself that he dropped him and he was spark out. And he said, you know, similar to the, um, well, this is me saying it, but it sounded by the way Tyson said, similar to the way Tyson Fury got up like the Undertaker after Wilder knocked him down. He said Mitch Green just jumped, he was knocked out, then just jumped back up, grabbing Tyson, ripping his jacket, punching him. They started fighting again. Tyson dropped him a couple of times. Then they're out on the street. Tyson was in a white roller with a soft top. Must have realised that, look, this is getting a bit out of hand. Bear in mind he was the heavyweight champion and he was at the, the pinnacle of his career, really, at that point. Tyson's jumped in his in his uh, roller but he said then then green is pounced on top of the soft top trying to get through to tyson as well he said he was a man possessed um 
but he fell off and cracked his head as he fell on the wing mirror. And Tyson said that at that point in his life, he's very materialistic, and he just said he could only think about how much that wing mirror would cost him. It cost him like thirty thousand um, dollars. But like it says that you know they ended up having a, a court thing. He, he sued him civilly, and Mitch Green, but he got thirty thousand awarded thirty thousand dollars, which was no good to him really in the end. But that was a big incident, and um, it put pay to the fight that. Tyson had lined up for with Frank Bruno. Obviously, he went on to fight Bruno twice after that. But at that point, that was um, postponed. So, yeah, I thought that was an interesting story, guys, on Mitch Green. Apparently, he's now a pastor. He must have been in his late 60s, um, living a life of peace and helping uh, kids, who street kids and everything else. He finished his pro record. I believe he had 27 fights, 19 wins, 6 losses, 12 of the 19 by knockout, 7 by decision. One knockout loss and five by decision. His only knockout loss came against Bruce Johnson, which was a TKO. Um, I'm just having a little look now to see if I can find any more information about that. But I don't know if it was a stoppage on a cut or anything like that. But that was the only one, so very durable as well. I uh, hope you enjoyed that, guys. If there's anybody who, who you would like me to cover, please let me know in the comment section. Please hit the likes and subscribe and hit the notification. Um, if you want to be alerted to the new videos that I put up, I will try and get at least one new mini documentary up each week. And they will be ones on boxing figures, um, incidents within boxing, the dark side of boxing, the good side, the iconic side of boxing. Um, but it will be mostly focused on boxing. I might do some UFC, some bare knuckle stuff as well. That's the kind of thing that I'm interested in. All right, guys. Bye.